Motherhood, even for a grizzly bear, is a test of character. It's June, and a spring snow squall has kicked up. But the bear and her cub are confronting more than just the weather. Wolves from the Druid pack have caught them out in the open. In the tug of war between grizzlies and wolves, the wolves attack where they can. They are after the cub. If they can kill it, they will eliminate a future rival. She's not a big bear, but she stands her ground. The wolves won't risk an injury. Suddenly, it's over. The wolves make a decision, and the bears are free to go. As the two dominant predators in Yellowstone, grizzlies and wolves, make life hard for each other. The cub is vulnerable to the wolves now. If he survives to become a really big bear, the tables will turn. But he'll be a cub for a long time yet, and growing up is a full-time job. Things are even more interesting with a brother or sister. Cubs can turn anything into a toy. Every game lets them discover what they can do. And their mother is always there to supervise. For grizzlies, these are the days of family life. They'll spend two and a half years under the constant care of their mother. Then the cubs will be big enough to go their separate ways and travel through Yellowstone alone. Until then, she is everything they need. A wolf's lifestyle couldn't be more different. Wolf pups are used to large families. There are five pups in the average litter. At one month old, they begin to venture away from the den. Their mother is the alpha female, the white wolf with the research collar. But they have other guardians too. Older brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles. A member of the family is always in attendance. When the pups grow up, many will disperse to other packs, looking for a place to belong. Wolves will always be drawn to each other's company. A grizzly ambles along a trail on his solitary way above the den. It's old Scarface. He probably means the pups no harm, but he's come far too close for the wolf's comfort. The adults treat him as a serious threat.
It's the pup's first encounter with a bear. And their elders have shown them something. Together, they can challenge a grizzly and defeat it. As for Scarface, he hasn't lived this long without knowing how to avoid real conflict. By the end of June, the high country is bright with color. Summer residents are settling in. They're claiming territories, building homes, finding partners. Even grizzlies get caught up in the social scene. It's the mating season. A courting couple could be mistaken for youngsters playing. But for grizzlies, this is romance. Once she has accepted him, they will wrestle and play and mate many times, staying together for 10 days or so. But their devotion will be fleeting. Enduring bonds are not in their nature. Yet, while it lasts, they share a moment of tenderness grizzlies seldom display. While the mating season brings solitary grizzlies together, it sends the companionable bison into an uproar. Bulls are built for the battles of the rut. They wield their massive heads as both weapon and defense. They must protect their own bodies as they twist and turn, pressing for an advantage. They are one-ton warriors, and each breeding season more than a few are fatally wounded. This young bull must have taken on more than his match and has suffered a head injury. Round and round he turns, unable to find his way forward. Remarkably, he makes it to solid ground. Bison are as tough as they come. Days later, the injured bull staggers on, alone, but still alive.
For the Grizzlies, this year's battle for Yellowstone is coming to a close. It's beginning to snow. One by one, the bears retreat to their dens. Winter settles in. The snow brings elk down from the high country to wintering grounds in the valleys. And wherever the elk go, the wolves follow. Winter is the season when wolves are riding high. Severe conditions always work in their favor, wearing down their prey. The deeper the snow, the better the hunting. No bears will contest the carcass, but many other scavengers gather at the feast. Eagles, ravens, magpies and coyotes are uninvited guests at every kill. Though wolves have the undisputed upper hand, they make the long winter easier for all these other carnivores. As long as there are elk, the wolves will provide. But all these hungry scavengers steal so much meat that they may be one reason why the wolves form packs, to protect their own share of the kill. Come February, wolves go visiting, pack to pack. Now is their season for courting and mating. If a stranger comes calling, yearling females and pups come out to greet him. He'll please them all if he can, but what he's really after is a willing partner and a private rendezvous. Yet even the most intimate moment often requires the pack's approval. The alpha pair that leads the pack may share a bond that lasts for life. But all this togetherness comes down to just one thing. Wow. He's shaking the tree. <laughs> <laughs> 